still in the screen yep this is the 12 year old one been put back in the box about five years ago it's all there a bit bit of dust on it here and there um, I know the pump doesn't light up anymore because that had packed up ages ago but hopefully it will be all right next we've got the cryo fuel this is uh, what will be going in the radiator all being well if it still works it's pre-mixed um, what's it say? Long. Uh, I don't know what the colour's got to do with anything, but there you go. Okay. Okay. Well, I've decided how I'm going to mount the cooler on the uh, radar case, but because this is um, 11 years old, no, 12 years old, I'm going to have to service the cooler. I've got no choice. So. Uh, what I'm going to do for a start is remove the cold plate and have a look and see what the pump's like underneath. Hopefully it won't be all gungy, but when you do the shake test on it, it is, uh, you can tell it's, it hasn't got hardly any water in, you can hear it sloshing about. And an all-in-one cooler, when you shake it, shouldn't have any movement at all really i mean a small amount of air probably ain't going to do a lot of harm that will just sit at the top of the rad but over time if it starts getting too much air in it that will destroy the pump which is what usually kills most of them so obviously being being as it's 12 years old i'm gonna to have to try and get rid of as much of this fluid as i can and then i've got some of that uh, EK cryo fuel to put in there but I've also got to try and test that the pump's still actually working as well um, how I think I'm going to do that is I'll open up the old Dell Optiplex plug in the Molex connector off the power supply in that while it's turned on um, and that should then spin the pump up, pump up. That's my plan anyway. But yeah, we've got to see what awaits underneath here. But really, if you buy any sort of old second hand or get hold of a second hand all in one that's any amount of years old, you do really need to do this. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with boiling up your flipping CPU. Right, let's. Uh, Got a bowl there. Right, let's have a look. Oh, actually looks pretty clean, given the age. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot. Usually, what they would say if you got that. I'd probably have to run the pump to get the air bubbles to come to the top. They'd say that you could just get all the air out and then top it up with distilled water. But like I say, it is... I don't know whether to gamble it. With it being 12 years old, it is a little bit risky. Right, so we've got the pump hooked up to the old Optiplex. And the idea is now when I turn the power on, that should fire up that pump um, I'll just see if I can zoom in a bit on the on the pump and oh hang on it's a bit hard to see what's no you're all right right here we go yep okay, that works Right, the pump's working. So power off. So that's the pump tested. Right, um, what I've done, I've emptied out all the original coolant. And there is roughly about 100 litres in there. And then, what I've done, 
is I've put um, some distilled water in there and tried to fill it up as much as I could. Um, and I've drained it out again. I put all the base plate and everything back on, ran the pump for a minute. There was low, that's, you could tell there was air in the system. And I'm just gonna measure and see roughly how much air I've got out. Plus there was some crap come out as well. So that was worth, I would say, mm, there is slightly more that's yeah. come out. Definitely. And it has got a little green tinge. Yeah. So, yeah, I've probably put more, I'll definitely put more in then than came out. And then, obviously I'm gonna put the cryo fuel in now. Um, I suppose you can see me put the first bit in, but it's pretty, nothing exciting. Um, but yeah, the reason I put the deionized in is because if you go and mix different types of coolant, the same as if you do it in your car, it can, in theory, congeal inside and block things up. It's unlikely if there's any trace trace amounts. Um, but I have heard of it. Right, oh, I've got a child cap on, I can't undo it. I literally can't undo it. Right, so the technique is, I've just put a little hole in the top of this, because otherwise you just end up losing a load. So hopefully I can just drip a small amount in. Like so. And then what you have to do to get, to get it to run down is you basically have to lift it right up in the air and shake the rad. And then what happens is, bolt, yeah, basically it's going down now. And as you get more full, there'll be more bubbles. Um, and you just basically keep doing that until there's no more bubbles. Um, and then put the cold plate back on. And probably what I'm gonna have to do is do the shake test to see if I can hear anything slopping about in the radiator and I'll just see how the pump sounds because you could hear the bubbles in it so if it sounds bubbly again I'll have to take the cold plate off again and then I'll have to repeat and just keep doing it until it's done but hopefully all being well with a little bit of messing around I should have a perfectly usable all-in-one um, Corsair H100 from 12 years ago right something that the other videos that were doing this didn't show I don't know if I can see it very well on the camera but basically when you put your water in um, what a lot of them will say they'll say shake it which does work to an, uh, an extent but what I found with this rad what works is you put your water in then you literally stand it up like that and then when you've done that for a bit, just lay it back down and it will go down. So I'll just do it. You might not be able to see the bubbles coming out. I'm not really sure. Um, hang on, I'll try and zoom in a bit more. Right, so, right, you can let go. I'll show them. So I pour my water in, like so. I don't need much, just enough to fill up the area where the gasket is and then I'm literally getting the rad I'm tipping it up like that you can hear it going in well you might not be able to on the camera and then you literally just put it back down like that lay it back flat and then do the same again so you don't really need to shake it about too much um, apart from oh, I put a bit too much in there but you can see there's bubbles coming out already. Or well, maybe you can see, maybe you can't. And just do the same again. And there we go. So yeah, I'll just, I'll just sort of work this out, filling it up myself. So I just thought anyone who tries doing this, there's a little tip for you. Right, well, I finished with the cooler. Uh, basically, it's all back together. All I've done at the end, you did have to shake it about a little bit once you get once you get near the end of it being filled up. Filled up. Um, what I've done is I put the cold plate back on, ran the pump up a bit, took it back off, give it another bit of a shake about. weren't hardly any bubbles come out. 
Um, just topped it up a little bit more though because the water had gone down a bit from the pump. Put it back on and it, it's it got a little bit of air in it I think but it's, it seems like it was when it was brand new. That was never completely like you could always hear a little bit of water moving. So I'd say it's as it came now. Um, with regards as to how I'm mounting it because this case is having the um, power supply at the top. What I'm going to do, because I like to have it as a fin, so you get better airflow, is I'm actually going to have the, the radiator mounted something like this. And then I shall have to modify the case a bit, and I shall basically have the cooler sitting on the cold plate sitting somewhere about here. So if I have to cut a little bit out of the case to get the pipes in, um, then I'll do that. And that's my bracket for mounting it on there. I should basically bolt it on with the screw from the power supply, I think. So, yeah, I think the Raider project's going to be all right once it's done.